Hey everyone, welcome to a new video and recently I've been on the Super Rare Games website looking at games to pick up. I think I picked out six good ones uh, that I think you guys will enjoy, uh, or maybe five, I don't know, it depends on how I feel about them. But uh, anyways, let's get right into it. Necrobarista is a pretty strange game. It's very intriguing, I would say, but um, it's hard to tell what the story is in this game. I feel like it's just a lot of character development, but I'll go over where I'm at in the game so far. So. The game pretty much takes place at a bar in Australia. And this bar, the terminal, is pretty much where people go in the afterlife. But it's like more of like a middle ground. You know, people are just barely realizing they passed away. And you have 24 hours to be at this bar uh, before you go on to the afterlife. Now, what I think will intrigue most people about this game is though, though it's a visual novel, you know, it's, it's not like most visual novels. I feel like this game has more of a comic book style to it, the way they show like certain scenes. Most of the time, from what I've seen, uh, characters are shown in stills when they react to each other or just having general conversation. But in certain scenes, when they're talking or reacting to each other, you'll get slight movement here and there. Now, as, the, as far as the main story goes, there is side story if you want to unlock more about certain characters. And you can unlock that by like certain mini games and things like that. Now, being that this game is very character driven, you're not gonna like all the characters. At least I didn't. You know, I'm not gonna say who I didn't like, but I'm pretty sure you guys will probably figure out like who I didn't really care for. But I, I really have to give it to this game for its presentation. You know, it was really able to pull me in, and I'm interested to see how this story ends. But I'm interested to know from you guys in the comments section, you know, like if you played this game, how did you feel about it? I, I like it. You know, I like the presentation, I like how the story goes. But uh, like I said, some of the characters are kind of like, uh. But other than that, I think this is a solid game. Now, like I said earlier, the game pretty much has to do with death and crossing over to the afterlife. So if those are like sensitive topics to you, you know, you might want to pass this one over because it goes into like acceptance and things like that. So um, I'm not sure how a lot of people will feel about that. It's not really a big deal. Uh, obviously, it's not a big deal to me, but some people may feel a certain kind of way about it. And next up, we have The Strange Brigade. Um, so I played this game with friends, I want to say back in the middle of 2020. Uh, we would have these late night streams and we would just, just play all types of games. And this one was pretty much one of my favorites because it reminded me kind of like an Indiana Jones type of adventure game. And being that we had pretty much four people playing online at all times, it's made the experience so much better. Now the game takes place in 1930s Egypt and you start with four characters with others to be unlocked as you play through the game. Now, you know, you can play the game single player, but it's just more fun to play with friends. And when I played with friends, you know, I had a great time, but they had a better time than me because they figured out the weapon system. You know, everybody had better weapons than me. I was always struggling with the, the lazy shotgun that I had. But anyways, shout out to my buddy Joel and John for carrying me through this game, man. I was struggling, but it was a great time. But anyways, guys, uh, Strange Brigade, definitely keep this game on your radar. Money well spent, I should think. Oh, this huntsman should help you out. And here is The Tourist. Uh, this is pretty much one of the most chill games I've played in a long time. So you play as a, a tourist and he's on a vacation of life. You know, they don't really give you too much information about the main character. But as soon as the game starts, you are dropped off at the first island and you're ready to explore. Now, um, it's really cool going around the island, you know, kind of like exploring stuff, talking to people and figuring out what to do to get to the next island. And though I do like this game, my experience with this game wasn't as pleasant as others were because um, my Joy-Con has drift problems with it. I just realized that, so trying to play this game on certain platform parts was really annoying. But other than that, I, I had a pretty much good time with this game, I would say. Uh, I saw that a lot of people had kind of like gave it a lot of praise back in, when it came out in 2019. They were saying things like Game of the Year and all that. And I was like, wow, Indie Game game of the Year, man. All right, okay. It's a possibility. 
But the first thing when you see the graphics in this game, it'll remind you of this game on the PS3. If you have played that game, it's called 3D Dot Heroes. Uh, it's like an action uh, Zelda type game. It's pretty cool. But um, yeah, you know, th there's a lot of stuff going for this game. You know, the exploration is fun, but once you once you get to a certain town, there's actually like these mini arcade games you could play, and uh, the arcade games are actually pretty decent. You know, you'll you'll be wanting to try to get the highest score and everything. So um, definitely. I think this game is worthy of having a physical. Um, this is the type of game that you want to have a physical because it's very unique, and a lot of people probably won't know, wouldn't know about it if it was digital only. You know, it did get a lot of praise. Um, it got like a lot of a promotion as a digital, I believe. But still, not every game like this that's unique like this gets the promotion it needs for people to know about it. So, seeing the super rare put it as a physical is a good sign. And here is Trans of Ruby. Um, this <laughs> this game has a a weird name. But uh, out of all the games on this list, this one is probably my favorite. So this is an adventure game where you play as a cyborg and she wakes up and there's some kind of dimensional disturbance and some kind of like a... I don't want to say it's a planet because that, that kind of reminds me of something like Sonic CD. But it's just like a... I don't know, like some kind of like a continent, I would say. So your character pretty much goes to see what the disturbance is. And as soon as you play this game, it'll really remind you of like adventure games, kind of like Adventures of Link. Uh, Castlevania, things like that. You know, I'm, I'm trying to avoid saying Metroidvania, but that's like one of the best terms to get everybody to realize like sometimes what, what kind of game you're getting into. But I like games like this just for the simple fact or the simplicity. You know, you pretty much know how to play them immediately and you know, this game adds enough to it to make it different from others. Now, you'll pretty much like collect these coins to unlock other areas as you go through the game. You'll fight boss characters. I actually struggled with the boss for a couple of minutes because um, I thought it was me, but it was actually my controller, the drift. <laughs> but uh, once I figured that out, you know, everything went well. I'm not too far in the game just yet, but one thing that sucks me in is that I love the way the graphics in the background looks. You know, I'm always looking forward to how the next area will look. So definitely something I think, I hope a lot of you will be interested in. I, I love these type of games. And I know I don't talk about them enough on my channel, but yeah, this was definitely one that I think people should look out for. The last thing I want to say about this game is that you get this gun that actually freezes enemies and you can actually use the enemies as platforms to get to higher areas. You also have a sword or, or I guess maybe a giant knife uh, to do melee attacks with. And as you get further in the game, you'll learn different combos with that sword. Anyways, guys, definitely keep your eye out for this one. Here's Hell is Other Demons. Now, you know, this game, you know, I, I do like this game. I think this game is awesome, but man, I was sucking at it, you know. I'm usually pretty good at twin stick shooters, but this one is, man, it throws everything at you. It keeps you on your toes. It's a lot of fun, but I expected to get further in the game by the time of this video, but I just, uh, I barely got to the fourth level. And I'm pretty ashamed of that. You know, I got to get better at this game, but it did compel me to keep playing it. So definitely wanted to show this game on the list. I hope that you guys have tried this game out. And if you have, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Here's Hell Pie. So most of you guys, well, all of you guys should know that I love 3D platformers, and you know, this game is no exception. But this game might be an acquired taste for some of you guys because of the way the story plays out. The story is actually pretty funny and silly, but a lot of people these days don't really have a sense of humor, so it may be a turn off for them. But for me, I thought it was great.
Now, one of the things that people might not like about this game is something that happens in almost all 3D platformers is that you have to kind of move the camera around to see where you're going on certain angles. And mainly I would say when you're kind of like jumping to different platforms, sometimes I get into a mode where I'm playing these games with momentum. So like if there's something I have to jump across, I'll just get my momentum going and I usually that helps me get it gets past it. But um, got to be careful in this type of game because if you can't see where you're going, obviously your chances of getting past the obstacle are pretty slim. But however you play this game, uh, definitely know that it's actually a lot of fun. And, you know, I, I pretty much love all 3D platformers, except Donkey Kong 64. That one, I don't know. I, <laughs> that's another topic. But uh, I would say definitely this is one you want to keep on your radar. Here's Source of Madness. Now, I'm really not into rogue-like games, but, you know, this one, you know, <laughs> this one is actually pretty unique to me, at least. Now, just in case a lot of you haven't played any rogue-like games, uh, typically these games are, I want to say that the, the games are always different every time you play them. Like, the level is not always the same. You know, the AI generates the way the level is according to, like, I don't know. Just what it wants to do, I guess. So you're getting a, a new experience every time you play the game. But what really compelled me to play this game is the horrific monsters you fight in this game. Like, I mean, the, the designs for the monsters, total nightmare fuel. You know, it might not be, <laughs> this game might not be the best for a lot of people. But for me, I love horror type stuff. So, you know, seeing a lot of the enemies in this game, you know, was pretty awesome for me. Now, I passed up on a lot of rogue games in the past. You know, I, I played a lot. You know, I got to a certain part, and then I just fell off from it. But this one has actually got my attention, I feel like. So, if you like what you're seeing here, I would say definitely take give this one a look at. You know, let me know what your thoughts are about it. And finally, we have Heaven Dust and the sequel, Heaven Dust Part 2. Now, I haven't really got to the sequel yet because obviously I'm still playing through the first game. But this is an isometric survival horror game. And it will really remind you of the first Resident Evil game. Um, it has that feel to it. Uh, you're trying to look around every corner to see what's waiting for you. There's traps. There's puzzles. It's all kind of awesomeness. And I'm um, really having a good time with this one. Now, a little bit about the story. Uh, scientists have found a virus in people's blood that uh, will lead to uh, immortality, and they call it Heaven's Dust. And <laughs> I don't know why immortality is like, like oh, I don't know. But anyways, um, uh, they find out that it's not all what it seems, and um, that's where the game comes in because people that have the get the sample pretty much are turning into zombies and everything like that. And you pretty much wake up in this laboratory, or well, this mansion laboratory, you're trying to figure out what's going on. And it's very interesting. And it plays just like a survival horror game. You have to be like very um, like uh, protective of your ammunition and just w like don't overall fight every enemy. It's just what a true survival horror game is. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. All the games I talked about are still available on the website and I'll have links in the description if you decide you want to pick these up. But anyways guys, thanks for watching. Radical Reggie and I will see you all in the next video.